Hey guys, welcome back to episode 80 of Animal Crossing, and now we're gonna do this, and now we're gonna take care of more business, so Simon, I'm actually doing this much more earlier than, I actually did this video much earlier than I normally do, because I just don't really have time, you know, on Wednesdays, it's just really, really busy, and there's a lot of stuff to do, and a lot of stuff to watch, I just don't have time, so I just did this early and just took care of a lot of things. And as you're gonna see, you're gonna see something really interesting happen towards the end of the video. But I'll, I'll talk about it when it comes up. So I'm gonna talk about Survivor today, and I'm gonna talk about X Factor. So Survivor, for the most part, was interesting. I thought it was way different from what I usually see on the show. But I don't think I still don't think it was that great. You know. It was better than last week and the last couple weeks, but it wasn't still. And why? I don't know why my controller failed right here. But yeah, it was better than the last couple weeks, but still not great. I just felt like it was a very boring. It still felt like to me, these people are not playing the game. Um, Brandon got voted out. I was not surprised by it. I already knew that Brandon was going to go home. So Brandon leaving was not a surprise. But the way that he went out was kind of, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know how to feel about it. I don't know if it was a good decision or not. To be honest with you, if I were these people, I would not send Brandon home. You know, I would want to keep Brandon because he is just a, he's a hot mess. You know, so why not keep the hot mess and just take somebody else that's a little bit more strategic out? I just don't think that that was a good move on anybody's part. The only person who didn't vote against Brandon, well, of course, Brandon and Albert. Those two voted for Sophie. I think Sophie really is starting to get really annoying to me. She, she was like whining about how Albert plays. I'm sorry, this girl, she has not done one thing in this entire game that has wowed me. You know, yeah, sure, she won two immunity challenges in a row, but the, nowadays the challenges are just so watered down that it's it's like anybody can win, you know, at this point. So, and, and if that's the ch if that's really the case, I don't care who really wins the immunity challenges. Yeah, it screws up some of the ordering for people. Sometimes they win the challenge and then they don't get voted out. But really, I mean, just come on, you know. Of all the people, the two middle people, the two in the middle for me, Sophie and Albert, what they really need to do is get rid of the people who are the people who can win this game, you know, in this case, Ozzy and Coach, they really need to get rid of those two in order for them to win, you know, that's the whole point. When they go after each other, that does not solve the problem, you know. Brandon can't win, and Rick can't win. Brandon has pissed off too many people, and, R and Rick has done nothing, you know, so seriously... It's on these middle two people, they don't want- they're just attacking each other, which is completely dumb, in my opinion. And... Sophie acts like she has it in the bag, like, it doesn't really matter. You know, she making it to the final three, but she ain't gonna win this final three. I can tell you that right now, you know, that unless she gets rid of Coach and Ozzy, which, you know, there's only two more eliminations left, you know, so you have to eliminate both of them in two- in two- in two- Tribal Council is back to back. Unless she does that, she's not gonna win. Okay. She has to go into the final three with Albert, and that's still gonna be a very tough one, I would have to say, because Albert really, at least I can see that he's at least done something. Maybe. Sophie has done nothing for me this entire game. Maybe she's, she's won two challenges, but so what? I don't care. At this point, you know, the challenges are so, like I said, the challenges are very watered down. It doesn't matter who wins them because anybody can win them, you know. There's no skill. There's not really any skill involved with a lot of these challenges. And I just don't really care, you know, who wins them. It hasn't really made a difference. Well, I mean, I don't know. Anyways, that was it for Survivor. I really just didn't care. As far as X Factor goes, I thought this X Factor episode was much better than a lot of the episodes beforehand. I really felt like they actually did something, you know. So, I mean, some of these performances were really great. You know, I really liked them. Some of them were okay, and some of them were, eh, you know. 
for me. There's still, there's always, but at this level, there's always going to be performances where I just really don't like them. You know, because it's just not good enough or whatever. For whatever, for whatever reason, they're not good enough, okay? So, yeah, I'll just go start talking about it right now. Marcus was first. He's saying, I'll make love to you by Boys to Men. Very old-fashioned song. I think it suited him, but it was very old-fashioned. Um, it wasn't original. And it just... I don't know. It just really didn't have a pizzazz or wow factor to me. It was it was okay. You know, it was one of it was one of those type of performances. You know, solid but not like interesting or great or something to be jumping up and down by. You know, it was clear to me though tonight was get rid of Marcus Knight because nobody said to him, oh, people should vote for him. Everyone, I mean, everyone else said vote for everyone else. You know, so clearly Marcus is not wanted. I think. I think Marcus after tonight is going to go home, but I have, but you, you know, you just never know. You just never know. Um, after that was Chris Renee. He sang Fly by Sugar Ray. I believe Mark McGrath leads the leads that group. Um, I thought Chris did an okay job with this okay song, you know. I don't think Mark McGrath's group is really that great. It's kind of, the song was kind of karaoke. It was kind of forgettable. Um, I just don't really think it was that gr good. I, I just felt like it was very safe, you know. And I guess for most, for the most of the part, these choices were safe. You know, people, they just chose whatever fits them the best. And that was okay, I guess, but nothing to be wild about by that performance. I think that was Chris Renee's wor- I think that was probably one of the worst of the night, to be honest. After that was Melanie Melanie Amaro. She sang Hero by Mariah Carey. And oh, yeah. you're making this really hard for me, Melanie. I mean, like, I really like Melanie. I've always liked Melanie. If you're going to sing Hero by Mariah Carey, you better nail it. I'm, I'm serious, because that is my song. <laughs> that is not a song you you play with, you know? So if you're gonna sing it, you better you better do a great job with it, and you better do it so well that that is the best version I've ever heard. And um, I think Melanie did a good job with it. However, I don't think she did a great job with it. I just felt like the uh, I, I, I just feel like that song. That's one of those songs to me that requires nothing more. Than singing the song, you know, it's just the song you sing, you know. Um, for her to change it, I liked the change that she made, but at the same time, downside to changing it, she changed it, you know. So I, I don't know whether or not I feel really great about her changing it, or if I don't feel great about her changing it, because she kind of added a somber note to it, kind of like a depressing tone to it, because it was in a minor key they were saying and that was okay but this song actually is kind of uplifting I think that it doesn't quite fit the song to me you know I I like the second half way more than I like the first half you know so I think she did a good job I just don't think it was a job that I don't think it was a great job so yeah I went to the city today and I went to Old Red and I think from now I'm gonna go on go to the city on Wednesdays because I believe that Red has his new items on this day so time to take a look and see what he has and uh, there is a certain item that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit jo after, after I talk about Josh Josh was next he sang Come Together by the Beatles that was a very good song choice for him by the audience I think he sounded good on the song I think he did, did a good job with the song like I said, all the choices were really safe, so I can't really say that. I mean, I can't really say it was bad, you know, because the audience chose it, but something went up with his controls right here. <laughs> uh, but he did a good job, and he definitely was better than anything that he's had done in the last two weeks. And for some reason, I kept clicking on this painting, but nothing is going on. Okay, so move, Red. <laughs> So yeah, this is the picture right here. I've actually seen this picture, and it, they, he called it a calm painting, 3920. And the reason why I stopped right here is because I was actually thinking about what the name of this painting is. To me, I actually 
didn't think it was called calm painting. I actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I I think it's called a quaint painting. I'm not really sure. Okay, peaceful painting. Something about pleasant. No, not pleasant, but peace peaceful or quaint or something. It's not called calm. Well, I know it's not called calm. It's not called calm, but. You know, I, I bought it as a sucker because I didn't freaking know whether, whether or not it was a calm painting. I had a feeling that it was not a calm painting. But, um, obviously, he didn't, he didn't, even he didn't know that it was a real thing either. So here's a frog woman pole. This is a real item, and it's the only item that you can get from Red that you can't get from Nook. So, yeah. Later on, I'll go to the, the museum and see, show you exactly what happens if you have a fake painting. Um, so after that was the second round. They got to sing pretty much anything for the second round. I don't, I don't know what they got. I don't know if it was their choice or judges choice or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, Marcus was first. He sang Careless Whisper by Wham. I like the first half way more than the second half. To be honest with you, I felt like his vocal was dragging in the second half. It just felt like it was, it really needed to quicken the tempo. When the tempo quickens up, your phrasing's gotta quicken up. You know, otherwise it feels like you're dragging the song along, you know. The drag the song is dragging you through the song, you know, and I just feel like his tempo is not really fitting the song or it's it's not really in sync with each other. So it was it was not very good for me. But um I don't think it was terrible. It was okay, you know. At this level, okay I don't think is good enough. Um, after that was Chris Renee. He sang No One by Alicia Keys. That was a very odd song choice. I had no idea that he was going to choose that or so they would choose it for him. I think he, I think he started off really well. Again, I liked the first half. I didn't like the second half, to be honest. The second half, it just felt like karaoke. It just felt like the original, you know, and I, I just don't think he did enough with that song to make me go, wow, like, no one has ever done that before, you know. Um, it it was okay, you know. Again, it was another okay performance. I think Chris Chris dropped the ball this week. He gonna really had a fantastic performance, but he didn't. Up next was Melanie Amaro. She sang "Feeling Good" by Nina Simone, which that's the original singer. Um, and. When I heard the song, I was like, oh my goodness, this song is just freaking overdone like hell. <laughs> it's, done, it's done so many freaking times, I'm so sick and tired of hearing it. So, I wasn't looking forward to Melanie singing it, but I have to say... <laughs> I have to say, it was awesome. It, it was great. I, I mean, that's probably one of the best... Oh, so here's the... Here's the painting, and he's gonna say, calm painting, and it's not the original. <laughs> so it's a forgery, and... <sighs> you stupid fox, why'd you have to... So basically, I sold it and got rid of it. So, after Melanie, she was awesome. That last note that she hit, that soprano note, that soprano whistle note, close to whistle note that she hit, was phenomenal. I've never heard a voice in a long time be able to hit a note like that, you know, in, and in tune, like not screaming that big note out, really doing it like you are talented. She nailed that big note. That note, I think, should give her the final three. Period. You know, I, I, that's why I love Melanie. You know, that's why Melanie should win. I don't think she will win, but if she can't win, I would love to see her get second. Oh, okay. Okay, so, and last of the night was Josh Kratchik. He sang Hallelujah by Jeff, by Leonard Cohen. I thought LA was completely off with this performance. I didn't, I disagreed so entirely with him. You know, he did a great job with it. He wasn't as great as Melanie, but he did a great job. So yeah, that was pretty much it. I think Marcus is going home. I think Chris probably should go or be in the bottom too, but... We'll see what happens. I think it's going to be Marcus. So that's pretty much it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See you guys later. Take care. Bye.